Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at the topic circular letters. Now what exactly is a circular letter? A circular letter is a standard letter with identical information that is sent to several recipients and we are all been prone to get circular letters at some point in time. If you've ever been to a school which you have, normally our institutions would send out circular letters to our parents. All right, so you will get a letter from your school to take home to your parent to tell them something. So that is an example of a circular letter that we'll be looking at today. Now, what are the various guidelines that are necessary for typing circular letters? First, let us look at the date. The date is shown as day, month, and year, or month, day, year. And this is based on the format or the style that is being used. So I have an example here, 2nd February 2021, or February 2, 2021. And that now is based on whether we're doing block style, indented, etc. The next thing is that the date can be written as month and year only. An example of that, February 2021. And finally, date as postmark, which basically is a date that will be stamped on the letter. Next, we will look at the salutation or the addressee's information. Now, the addressee information may be typed as their customer, their house older, their parent or guardian, or dear sir or madam. Normally, the plural form of the salutation should never be used as one recipient will read each individual letter. So there is no sense of saying dear customers when when I receive that letter from that um, organization, I am a customer. All right, so we try as best as possible to personalize this type of letter although it is done generally. Now, there should be six to nine spaces between the date and the salutation. This is to allow the name and address of the addressee, which is the recipient of the letter, to be inserted if mail merge will be used. So when you type the date, you will have six to nine spaces and then you type the salutation. Now, we're going to look at the tear off or the cut off slip. Now a circular letter may contain a tear off or a cut off slip. This section is used to solicit response or replies from persons to whom the letters are sent. After filling out the section, the recipient is expected to cut off and return this section to the sender. Now to do this aspect, there are various things or guidelines that should be followed. There should be a double space before and after the line. The line should be or should go over into the margins of the page. That is both left and right margin. We use unspaced hyphens to draw the line. Now there are various things I've seen where persons use dots or use a straight line. But for me, the hyphens are used to draw the lines. And it is done here in circular letters as well as when we're using legal documents. And I will explain the reason for that when we get to the actual document to see how it looks. Now where information is to be filled in on the document, the cutoff section is typed in double line spacing. And finally, a scissors can be added if desired. Now this can be done by selecting it from symbols or by clicking the font box and select windings or windings tool. The scissors is then placed at the beginning or at the center of the line. Now there are two types of scissors based on which windings you select. If you select windings, after you have done that, then you will press shift tool and this scissors will be displayed. Hopefully you can see it properly. If you select windings tool, after you have done that, you select shift plus five, shift five, right? And this scissors 
will be selected. Now let's quickly go over to Microsoft Word to see how a circular letter will look based on this information. Okay, so here we are in Microsoft Word. Again, I will not speak to the letterhead as by now you should know how that should be constructed. All right, so I'll get straight into the letter. So here we are, and this is the block style letter that we are doing. It is not formatted as yet. We will do that together. So I start off with the date. All right, and I have 2nd October 2020, and this is the format for the block style. All right, day, month, year. Following that, we will have six to nine spaces between the date and the salutation. Now, I am on no spacing, and I would have explained that already, all right, as well as line spacing. So I'm going to, currently, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's based on your choice. I said six to nine. All right, so that is seven, eight, nine. All right, so there I have it. So, and the reason why we leave this big space here, all right, is if it is now that we're using mail merge, the information for the person will be placed here, right? If not, that's all we still leave it here for the circular letter, all right? That's all we're teaching it. So you leave that space when you're typing the circular letter, all right? Um, and I explain the reason why. All right, so I have your dear parent or guardian, all right, and it's being general, all right? Um, uh, and my first paragraph is indented. Bear in mind that this is the block style, so it should be in the margin. All right, I'm looking on my date, October 25th, comma, 2020. All right, and that's not how it should be written for the block style. So that should be 25th or 25 October 2020. All right, everything else. And I'm seeing here there should be a double space between my complementary close and my last paragraph. And this is a triple space, so let me take out that. All right, and then I have between yours truly and the signature block. All right, which is a complementary close and a signature block. I have three spaces. All right, and then it's based on the letter that you're typing. Some letters will be longer, some will be shorter. All right, so maybe you want to even it out on the page if it's too short. All right, but I have three spaces there. Now I'm going to go to the aspect that we all need to learn today, and that now is the, the line the cutoff aspect. So I have marked this point where the cursor is blinking to put my line. How do I do that? The first thing I need to do is that I need to ensure that my line, and I'm going to press my dash, that is what is going to give me the unspaced, um, the hyphens here, and that is after zero on your keyboard. All right, so here it is. Now it will not go any further than this. See, it goes down. It will not go any further than that because my margin is set. All right. So what I will have to do is that I will have to adjust the margin for this line only. How I do that, I go to my ruler bar and I click on my indent, my indents, and I drag it over. I'm selecting the bottom aspect, which is a square, and I'm dragging that over into the margin. All right. About 0 0.5 inches into the margin. All right, some persons may take it all the way over. All right, it's your preference. I leave it there at about 0 0.5. All right, because I'm going to add the scissors to the beginning of this. And then I go over to the right margin and I click the right indent. And I take that over to 7. All right, you will not see that being done immediately. So I'll have to extend the dashes and you will see it going over into the margin there you have it so that is how i do the unspaced hyphens all right i am going to zoom up a bit later on to show you the difference between the hyphens and the the other leader dots all right so that is it now how do i get my scissors all right so i'm going to go to the font box this is what i use and i'm going to select windings all right 
I have it here because I used it previously. So this is windings. I selected windings. Now you realize that windings is selected here. I'm going to press shift plus number three and I got a scissors. All right, the excess of the line, I'm just going to press the lead to take that out. And that's the scissors that I have there. All right, I could have pressed, um, let me get this off. And let me select windings two and press my shift and my number five key. And that's what I got. All right, let me extend or yeah, zoom up the screen so that you can see what is happening. So you can see what is happening. All right. Um, so that is it there. Now I have a double space before and a double space. This is not a double space after. That's a double space after. All right. Now the next thing, so that's how I get my tear off aspect. Um, again, I said that you could have gone a bit further into the margin with the, the line. All right. But that is what is used. All right. The next thing that we're going to look at is our line before and after our text. Now there should be two spaces before and after a line. So I need to ensure that that is there. Two spaces before and after a line. All right. So you need to ensure that at all times. This is two. And your show height can be a guide to that. Alright, um, then we look at the date again. This is not the block style format. Alright, and I'm looking now at the signature of the parent or guardian. That should be in single line spacing, currently it's in a double. So I'm just going to highlight that and press Ctrl plus 1 to get it in single line spacing. All right, and that is it. For some um, organizations or some circular letters, they may have the letterhead being placed on this section as well. All right, the cutoff section, the letterhead may be there, followed by the information. All right, but most of what you will be typing in the subject area may not show that. All right, so that is how it is right here. I'm just going to quickly go over this again and maybe put it in the indented style. All right, um, bear in mind, so this is being tabbed over a bit for the indented style. Apart from the date in this format, it could be October 12th. All right, so that it will be it in the indented style and full stop. Okay, another way, as I said, that we, sh we could have it, we could have a um, month and year only. Or we could have date as postmark. All right, so I'm going to leave it like that and then follow through with the rest of the information. So everything will be okay. Oh, the date will now change October 25, comma, to remove this. All right, and then the paragraph should be indented. And then the... This aspect should come over. I'm going to use my ruler bar to take it over. All right. And then truly, comma. All right. Um, oh, colon should be here. All right. Now, as it relates to the cutoff portion, because that does not really affect the letter, we do not normally trouble this part of the letter as it relates to formatting, as it relates to blocked or indented. The only thing... That would be of major concern down here would have been the date. And so we'll just format the date and leave the rest as is. Because this part doesn't really affect the letter as the person would have cut off or tear off this part um, and send it in. All right. And that is it. All right. So that is how we would do this. Now, I said something earlier and I'm going to quickly explain that as it relates to the line. I'm going to do it at the bottom part here of the letter. All right, so here I've written three R's, and I have the on space hyphens. I have the 
dots, which are otherwise known as the full stops, and I have the straight line. Now, please note that the unspaced hyphens are raised from the line itself. Look at the foot of the R. It's raised from the line, so it goes in the center of the character. The full stop and the line, they go on the line itself. And so they're in line with the foot part of the R. Now, what does that mean? It means that the full stops and the line, we use those to sign on. So for someone to sign their signature, to write their name, etc. That is what these two lines are used for. So in the letter that we have here, we realize we realize I have the line for the person to sign their signature, or I have up here the line to write name, etc. All right. Now when it comes to the unspaced hyphens, and you will see this more with um, legal documents, it goes into the center of the character. So it's not on the line; it is rather raised, and that is what we use to draw the line for the tear off portion, as well as the lines within legal documents. All right, so whenever we use the dots on the straight line, that is used to sign on and to write on because it goes on the line itself. Let me put one here beside this N. So I have the, it goes straight in line. But if I use the unspaced hyphen, it is raised. All right, and that's, we can't sign on that because if you should sign or write something on that, it will be higher than everything else in the line. And that's not what is used. All right, so hopefully that distinction would have allowed you to appreciate these three things a bit better and that's it for the video all right if you liked what i did here today please don't forget to select the big thumbs up also please share it with others so that they too can benefit from the content and if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe all right thanks for watching and see you in my next upload